um, license commission. Okay. Continue. Thank you for um, uh, joining us with the uh, license commission meeting for Wednesday, June 2nd. Commissioners um, uh, present are Brian Campanelli, Natasha Yakolev, and Helen Kahn. Uh, we're going to call a meeting to order, and we gotta, um, we're recording audio and visual on this as well. Uh, at this time, if there is any public comment regarding Blue Paws or JJ Tavern, we're going to save that to the end um, for the item number eight on the agenda. If there's any other public comment, uh, can you um, speak up now, please? All right, seeing none, we're going to move on. Um, with just another note, when we do hit uh, agenda eight, and if there is a lot of comment, we're going to actually ask you to use the um, hand raising uh, item on Zoom. So keep that in mind, please. All right. Uh, number three, public hearing on application for multiple amendments on annual wine and malt restaurant license, the Roos Northampton LLC, one Market Street. So um, like to open public hearing, a motion to do so. I will make a motion to open a public hearing on the application for multiple amendments on an annual wine and malt restaurant license. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. So anyone from the roost that's here, would you like to comment? Sure. Uh, this is Benjamin, Benjamin Coyle on behalf of the roost. Also on the line uh, in this conference is Robin Wynn. Um, I can give you a brief overview of, of these multiple transactions. Um, currently, Adam Dunitz um, was a, a member. He has relinquished his ownership interest in the Roost Northampton LLC. And Robin Wynn, who is the current 30% owner, is now going to be the sole owner of the LLC. Adam was also the manager of the LLC and the manager of record of the liquor license. He is going to be removed as both the manager of the LLC and manager of record. And Robin Wynn is the new proposed manager of record for the liquor license. Essentially, everything else is going to remain the same. They had two owners. They're going down to one. Business is going to remain um, as it is. Uh, Robin's going to be the manager of record. She understands the responsibilities and duties of a manager of record. Um, she's had a run a good business. She continues to want to do the same. Uh, during some trying times, they survived. And she's looking forward to the future. And I can answer any questions that you guys might have relative to, to any of the aspects of the application itself. Helen or Natasha, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. I'm familiar with, with Robin and the cafe and she's been there from day one and I trust that the, the transition will go smoothly. Helen? And I'm on that same page. <laughs> Great, I have none. Any further comment? None for me. All right, seeing none, then um, can we get a motion to close the public hearing, please? I'll make and a motion to close the hearing. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, so um, now open for discussion amongst the uh, licensed commissioners, seeing we had no questions. Um, are we fair to say we can uh, put in a motion to forward and approve? Yes, on board. Okay. Can somebody do, um, would one of you like to sure. do a motion? I will make a motion to approve the application for amendments to the annual wine and malt restaurant license for the Roost in Northampton at One Market Street. This is for a change of manager, change of officers, directors, and change of ownership interest. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You need uh, to redo that, Annie? No, I just need a quick roll. So, uh, Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Moving on, item number four public hearing on application for change of license category on an annual wine and malt restaurant license. 
Land Rant LLC, DBA, The Dirty Truth, 29 Main Street. Can I get a uh, motion to open up the public hearing? I will make a motion to open up the public hearing for agenda item five. It's four. Four. Agenda Thank item you. five. <laughs> you, you second, Ellen? I do. Well, not okay, all, 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 all in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay, great. Um, someone present to uh, speak on uh, Dirty Truth's behalf? Yep, Kyle Anderson <clears throat> here from the Dirty Truth. Welcome. Thank you. So go ahead and um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. You got a request for cordials and liquors permit. Yeah, we, we're just looking to um, continue expanding what we're able to offer. Um, you know, first, we're, we're not going to jump into any extensive uh, program with these, kind of um, start slowly to, to see what we can handle. But um, yeah, there's just a lot of fun beverages that we can work with within this, the uh, expansion of the license um, without having the full uh, liquor license. So, Okay. Um, what kind of uh, cordials do you plan on serving? Probably, uh, um, again, starting off slow with, with Amaro's. Um, the, uh, you know, the trending drink for the summer is the spritz. So um, probably, you know, the low ABV drinks um, that kind of are nice and light. Um, so keeping okay. it simple for now. Yeah, and you're going to just stick to the list of what's an approved um, by the ABCC. Correct. Program. Yeah. As far uh, as I know, the distributors limit what we can order. So. Um, right. Okay. Helen or Natasha, do you have any questions? Um. Oh, my. I don't have a question. It's more just a comment related to the distributors list. Mm -hmm. Your your require anything that you um, have on hand as a cordial or a liqueur has to have cordial or liqueur on the bottle as a stamp by the ABCC. That's the most important part. But otherwise, I think it's a great um, additional license to have. Great, thank you, Helen. Anything? Uh, no, I have nothing to add to that. Yeah. Okay, can I get a um, motion to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for number four. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You need roll call on that, Amy? Yes, please. Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion amongst uh, commissioners regarding that? No? I'm set. I so. Okay, so uh, motion to approve. Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for change of license category on an annual wine and malt restaurant license uh, for the Dirty Truth as outlined in item four on the agenda. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye Kyle. Good luck. Good luck with it. Thanks. Okay, item number five, applications for short-term liquor licenses. Northampton Center for the Arts, location 33 Holly Street, events outside um, with a DJ, food truck, et cetera, wine and malt request a fee waiver. Is there anyone here to speak to us regarding item five? Yes. Can you state your name for the record, please? Joanna Walker. Hi, Joanna, thank you. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about your function? Well, 33 Holly had a big parking lot renovation during the pandemic, and there's now a outdoor courtyard. So this is the first thing we're going to be producing since opening back up. And it's a community dance party with a DJ and just like it says, dancing outside in the parking lot. So just to, um, I know I didn't mention it before, so it's a June 18th, um, 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. That's, um, the times are correct? Yes, and there's two more dates on there. Do we have to do this each month? There's one in July and one in August. Oh yeah, I see in the next page. So also July 9th, um, 2021. And August and 6th. 7 to 9.30 and August 6th. 
Yes. So, Annie, do we need to individually or can we just lump them together? No, you can lump them together. Yeah, okay. Perfect. All right. Um, Helen, Natasha, anything? Any questions? It's been so long since we've done one of these for the yes. Center for the Arts. So it's yeah. great to have you here and see that something's happening over there. I drove by the other day and noticed the parking lot set up. It looks beautiful. Great, thanks. Um, I guess there's, where where is the bar going to be set up since this is a new sort of area for- I, I don't even know if we figured it out yet, but if the, I guess I'm picturing it up at the top of the courtyard. So there's a sunken courtyard and I'm picturing the DJ and the bar area up top and then the dancing happening in the down below. And is it, are, are you doing it like with wristbands or how is the, how are you checking IDs and doing things like that? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, we weren't planning to do that, but we can. We have never done that before for any events. We've never had wristbands. Yeah, because it's, I mean, it's, I'm assuming it's an all ages event or is it a, it's an all ages event, although most of the, you know, usually we're asking for these liquor licenses for Arts Night Out, which is also just anybody comes in off the street, families. So it's not the first, you know, it's not like we run an over 21 establishment. Right. Um, but it's, a, I mean, it's a good question. If you want me to figure out a plan for that, I can. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's reasonable just to know sort of how IDs will be checked. Or, you okay. know. It's just as they come and order drinks or if you're responding, I don't know if there's like an entrance to it or, or how you want to do it. All right. Typically, um, alcohol is definitely delineated. It's kept separate from other spaces, especially if there's multiple age mm -hmm. groups. Yeah, we, I, th we definitely were planning on that. Okay. And having a, you know, beer garden off away from the main center of the activity. So will the... So will that be delineated with one entrance, one exit? Uh, so it's not easy to just walk amongst? There's one entrance and one exit to the whole parking lot area itself. Mm. But people aren't, I'm trying to picture. The part, the upper parking lot's gonna be blocked off. People can park in that back area. And then, um, I mean, people are going to be able to walk on and off the property. I mean, I yeah, guess, we ha you know, really we have never, ever done this before. So this is like yeah. all new stuff to consider. We've not never sure had an you, outdoor event. Yeah, not sure if you've ever had the taste of Northampton or you experienced that, but their beer gardens were always, you know, fences, railings, ropes, um, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you kind of got in. That's where you got your drinks. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you have a large parking lot where just anybody can just take off anywhere. We can't have... You know, it's not Key West, Florida, although I fight for it as much as I can. I would love to be able to have open container, but we can't do that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's got to be some kind of a um, delineation there so that you can keep control of who's got the drink and where they're going with it, you know, so to do they, And they drink it while they're in that contained area? Yeah, I mean, if you want to contain the entire parking area, you know, more power to you, but you just got to have... No, I think we contain a portion of it. I'm just trying to understand, yeah. like, do people have to finish their drink while they're in that enclosed area? Um, we just can't have them leave the parking area, the lot, you know, with an open mm -hmm. container. So however you decide that you're going to keep control of that, that's totally up to you and everybody that's working with you. All right. Like maybe a no beverages behind, uh, beyond this point sign. Right. So it's clear. Okay. Yeah. And since it's been a while, you have a tip certified yes. person pouring. Okay. Yes. Great. Any other questions? I don't have other questions. <laughs> Go ahead, O'Brien. I was just wondering, uh, we, I just want to say that uh, we have served in that parking lot before as Building 8 Brewing, mm -hmm. and uh, you, 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 the, the, the crowd that it attracted uh, didn't, you know, didn't seem too much, obviously, as things grow, it changes and everything like that, but just from my point of view, I would recommend allowing people to move freely, but just wristbanding them. You know, you can buy 500 wristbands for under 10 bucks, and you can't get them off without ripping them, and, you know, and it doesn't take too much. To, to be able to handle that, especially in the space where they are. 
and and the, and the, like the crowd there was uh, you know much appreciative of being able to have a beer or wine or something like that and move around freely through the galleries and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a great experience for us the, the time we did it for, although it wasn't heavily patronized and I'm assuming something like this with music and stuff would add to it, but you know, I'm in favor. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank you. That you. Goes on, you know? <laughs> well, Brian, do we have a motion? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm prepared. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So I'll Joanna, maybe again. maybe something like that would work out for you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wristbands. wristbands. I'm on it. All right. All right. Can we get a motion to approve? Sure. I will make a motion to approve the short-term liquor licenses for the Northampton Center for the Arts for the dates of June 18th, July 9th, and August 6th from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. for the 33 outside dance parties. Uh, I'm just wondering, do we need to say contingent upon um, making a plan for delineation, you know, and serving of alcohol or, I mean, I trust that you're going to be doing that. I just didn't know if we need to state that for the record. Annie, that do you want to for the record? That there might I be think, a need I to think be wristbands were the idea. So I, I guess I'm wondering, Annie, does she, did they need to submit more paperwork to you saying this is exactly how we're going to be doing it? It's up to you. Okay. <laughs> I think the wristbands, yeah. as long as somebody's watching the entire parking lot, you know, if they, you know, they hold the liability. So they we, can, need to... we can assign a, you know, a specific person for that right. job. Wristband okay. and parking lot surveillance. Sure. Perfect. Okay, sorry. I guess I'm saying I would be comfortable saying contingent upon, you know, a, a plan that, that is submitted to the license commission. Not that we have to have a meet about it again, but just that there's some something in hand that says this is how we're going to do it. So, Helen, I propose that you propose an amendment to Natasha's motion. Okay. So, I, without that having been okay, because we didn't go through and do it. There's an active motion. Okay. There's a motion on the floor, but now you have the ability to amend it, and then it goes to final approval. Okay, so I will make a motion to amend that approval based contingent upon submitting some form of paperwork to the license commission um, detailing how you're going to uh, delineate and control the serving of al alcohol. Does that make sense? That covers. I guess it. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. May I ask a quick question? Sure. Before we move on, let's. Can I just get a roll call before you move on? So Brian. Yep. Natasha. Yes. And oh, Helen. Excuse me. Yes. Go ahead, Joanna. If we had, you know, if we hired like um, a beer truck, does that mean the the person? whose business that is, is then responsible? Are we still, are we still? Yeah, for instance, I think if you hired building eight, right, they would carry the liability of who they serve, I would believe. Isn't that right, O'Brien? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I think la last time uh, you guys pulled the license and since we self-distributed, we were the distributor on site. Um, and we did check, we, we carry liability anyway, but we, we were checking IDs as we served people. Um, right. But it's more than helpful to have somebody just as people are walking in to check an ID and then wristband the people. Mm -hmm. So then that alleviates that whole give and take as it's happening. And then you just, and then if people don't have a wristband, they don't get served. And then it's always good to have somebody just walking through the crowd, pick up empties, cups, whatever, and just making sure that anybody holding a drink, you know, if they're righty or lefty, you know, you see the wristband on them and then you're kind of good with that. But I mean, we always carry a liability, um, uh, what's it called, a rider. And uh, for any event that we do anywhere that's not oh. on our licensed property. So, Jana, the, the short answer is yes. If you hire someone else, mm -hmm. you basically afford them the the problems of serving alcohol. Um, it, it wouldn't not that it's a problem, but you get what I'm saying. You can mm -hmm. enjoy and entertain at will and not have to worry about it because now they handle it. So, but also, I think it's good to have somebody 
representing the establishment on site because you know we're not if we're going to be serving we're not going to have anybody walking around the the crowd so more, more or less you know i think that's uh, so you got to kind of are both somewhat equally responsible in a way you know but i think last time 33 holly pulled the permit and then we were kind of the distributor and we also brought non-alcoholic we brought the, the the maple mama stuff and we had some other na stuff with us as well so we kind of set up a remote draft system and had a tent and had a truck there and everything so um but you know i think it, i think if, if both parties work together it, it solves a lot you know because if you're busy serving and taking money and doing whatever it's tough to keep an eye on the crowd um so to speak I mean, see how it susses out how many people, what it's like, you know, sort of thing. I think too. that's what we would try to do is hire someone. And I would love to talk to you about if you're free. <laughs> sure. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> but I think we'll, that will be what we try to do is hire okay, so, and then also have a wristband system that we can implement. So this will change the motion, would it not? I mean, you're going to go ahead or it could carry the same. Um, and just add to your amendment that whether it's hired out or not, and we can still approve. No, lost. I mean, yeah, I, I would. I, su I suggest um, keeping keeping it approved um, until Joanna has come and let us know that they're going to be going a different route than what than what was just approved. And then right. So let's let's approve the motion on the floor, it's and already then approved. okay. So you're good. You did roll call. So Jana, if you're gonna hire someone, just submit whatever paperwork you need to of who you're hiring, and okay. um, you know, do we? She doesn't have to come before us again. That'll be. He won't. But the but the um, say it was O'Brien. He would have to come. Okay. What's the date of the event? There's First three. Point. June 18, July 9, and August 6. Okay, so June 18 would fit, it would have to be approved now. Yeah, June. it would have to be approved now or we could have a brief special meeting. It's up I would rather make a motion to approve. If, if Joanne, if you're okay with hiring O'Brien and you guys want to work that out, I would just as soon approve that right now. But we don't have, we can't do, we don't have an application oh, you, and it's not on the agenda. That's right. You yeah, no, I think it's that. fine. If she, right. if she's approved, if you approve yeah. her to have the, the, the thing, we, we can act as a distributor and we're tip certified. <laughs> we can serve and we can bring beer. Um, it would just be a matter of whether or not they want to have wine as well, I guess. And then right. they would so still be able to get, you know, so if they're approved, they can, get us as a distributor and they can get another wine person as a distributor and get the get the, the 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 wine and beer that way and we're not you know we wouldn't have to pull it would be 33 holly would be getting the permit correct she just lists di distributors i mean because i don't remember ever talking to williams or anybody else the uh, yeah the distributor right yeah, if, right? if she were to use him as a distributor yeah o'brien's correct yeah i'm yeah. a, I'm a yeah exactly so and then you can still get your wine from a distributor if you want that or or something as well you know yeah i don't and, think we want wine i think we just want beer okay yeah and like soda like you said yeah something else a non-alcoholic yes for sure and great wine. so annie do we need to amend this or are we good what would you amend it to well that she's now representing with a, a distributor well does it matter? I mean, I mean, for your does, sake of paperwork, that's all I'm asking. It does matter in that we we require a licensed distributor on file <clears throat> for each license. So, I I would just say, once you finalize your plans, you just let me know, and if anything seems like it needs a vote, then we have a special meeting or we have a meeting for the July or August applications. Okay. At the July meeting. Great. Unless, I mean, unless you see it differently, do you, I mean, do you, would you feel more comfortable making a motion? I just don't know what the motion would be, I guess. Well, I think the motion would be exactly what it was, except for it would be, there's a distributor supplying beer, you know, and that would be named in the motion as, 
you know, O'Brien's. Um, I think if, if they if if Joanna plans on going with O'Brien, I think she can just email me and say, please add Building Eight as a distributor for the June. Perfect. I'm satisfied with that. Helen, Natasha, are you good with that? Yeah. That's great. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. So everything's passed. We can move on, right? Good. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Thank you. Take care. <clears throat> um, number six, application for short-term liquor license, building eight brewing, location 320 Riverside Drive, June 26, 2021, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, the event is a special release, wine and malt. So all documents have been submitted. Um, O'Brien, would you like to... Yeah. Give us a discussion on that. Yeah, we're we're doing a, a just a small event to uh, feature a uh, our regular flagship uh, a beer called the IPA. It's a West Coast style IPA, and this time we're going to be releasing it with a, a grapefruit puree added to it. So it's going to be a grapefruit version. We'll also have a couple of other summer release beers that'll be available. Um, I've been in touch with Fub Boston, who is about 100 yards from our venue. They're going to have a person on site for delivery. Uh, we'll have menus on the tables, of course, spaced. Um, it's We're not looking for it to be a real big event. There's not going to be any entertainment or anything like that, but basically just celebrating uh, that we can actually have some people having pints in our space for the first time in about a year and a half. And um, People can order food in Fub Boston. We'll be delivering it uh, on site and uh, we'll have the area fenced off per usual with snow fence, uh, maintaining handicap accessibility for people to get in. Uh, we'll be serving in the tasting room and uh, have some seating in about a 20 by 40 square foot area. Um, and uh, we'll be IDing um, at the bar. Uh, I don't foresee this being a very big event. Nothing's happening in the courtyard or anything. We're just sort of, you know, baby steps um, type of thing. Yeah, I've been to your um, uh, events before. They're fantastic. So. Thank you. Yeah, good. Um, Helen or Natasha, do you have any questions for O'Brien? I don't. You're, you've got it down with your yeah. events yeah. at your brewery. Yeah, yeah. Don't fantastic. Have Great. Can we get a motion to approve? Sure. Uh, I make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for Building 8 Brewing at 320 Riverside Drive for June 26th from 12 to 8 p.m. for a special release party. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Fantastic. Can I ask for a five-minute break? Um, I'd like to just use the restroom before we start this next one because I know these two are going to be longer. I'll be right back. Natasha, I know, do you have to go? I do have to go in like two minutes. Okay, well. I should just go. You should probably just go. I should just go. All right. Before we get into discussion. Yes, okay. I have your comments and I will read them for the record when it's okay. time. Okay, thank you. Okay, have fun. Good luck. Thanks. Bye. Yeah.
Okay. Um, did Natasha have to go? Yes, she did. I told her I would read her comments as we get to agenda items. Sure. All right, great. Um, so item number seven, review and approval of the following on-premise outdoor dining expansion applications for public spaces. T Roots Inc, DBA, T Roots 249, Main Street, one park. Brian is frozen. Oh, I thought it was me. <laughs> uh, Majestic Enterprises LLC. Go ahead. Oh, we lost. Is you, there Brian. anybody here to? Um... We lost you, Brian. If you could oh, just you start. Me? If you could just start back reading the T roots part, and then. Sure. You 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 can hear me now. Yes. Okay. Um, T Roots Inc. DBA, T Roots 249 Main Street, and MP Majestic Enterprises LLC DBA, the Majestic Saloon 24 Main Street Summer on Strong Project. Anybody here present to speak for T Roots Inc.? No, three of us here. Oh, okay, great. Go ahead. Andrew, I need your names for the record, please. My name is Gary Schaefer. I'm one of the landlords of the space. Okay. Who else? Lisa and Nicole, can you speak? They might be oh, muted. Yeah, sorry, I was muted. This is Lisa DiRico. I'm a co-owner um, of the premises, a, a landlord. And Nicole should be here by phone connection. I see her phone number, yes. Nicole, can you hear us? Uh, I'll send her a text. Although she's on the line, I can see her number. It's the 845705. Yes, I'm All right, here. so go ahead and tell us. Oh, Nicole? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. <laughs> can, you, so, can you explain, well, uh, Gary, do you want to lead Nicole into this since you guys have been working together? Sure, I'll explain what we're asking for. In lieu of the Masonic Street construction, we're asking to move the seating that was in the back out to a front spot in the 15 minute zone, which is in front of the store. Uh, and I see that the city a couple of days ago dropped some cement blocks there um, as we were going to request. So uh, that's either a good sign or somebody else is going to have the space. Um, so we're just asking to move from the back because of the loss of that space to the front. The same two tables. Uh, and I should add, Nicole will be moving her, she's got some potted trees and some planters that she will move to finish enclosing that space for uh, both uh, looks and safety. All right. Um, Annie, was there um, any kind of drawing or map submitted? I just, for whatever reason, I can't find. There was, it should be on, I tried to send everything in one email thread. Um, it, it should be one from one of the first emails on May 28th at 2.24. Yeah, I have it, so it is there. Okay. So they're, yeah, so they're essentially, they're they're just looking to take over that one parking space. Um, it's it's uh, quasi in front of T-Roots and Broadside book, Books. Um, the city did drop the barriers for T-Roots to use, so it's not for anybody else. Um, okay. <laughs> and, um, Natasha, in her notes, she said that if the city can accommodate and provide the barriers and Broadside is okay with, with it, then I would support granting the outdoor dining. I, I, this is Lisa DiRico. I appreciate the reference to the bookstore. Um, I'm a co-owner of the Broadside and the premises as well. And they're okay with it. They understand the limitations of the request because, um, and they do have customers who use that space for uh, special pickups, but um, they're on board with this. 
Okay, great. So all paperwork is uh, appropriately done, Annie. So we're good. Yep. So the only but, thing would be just an inspection prior to accepting patrons. So if we do an approval, we have to do a contingent upon the inspection. Correct. And that's by, um, is that by building department or board of health? Uh, it's building. Okay. All right, Helen, would you want to um, make that motion to approve with a contingency? Uh, yes, I'm definitely willing to do that. Um, I'm sorry, my paperwork keeps going away on me too. Okay, um, I will uh, make a motion to approve the on-premises outdoor dining expansion application for public spaces by T Roots Inc. BBA T Roots at 249 Main Street, contingent upon um, an inspection by the building department and approval by them. I'll second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brian? Yes. And... Is that Helen? Yes. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. I have a question before we leave this topic. This is Lisa DeRico. Sure. Um, yep. I didn't hear a time limitation in that. Does that just follow construction or do we need to be mindful of returning to the commission at some point? for an expansion of authority? Um, so right now, these approvals are given on behalf of the mayor's, um, it's essentially a War Powers Act. So uh, he is just, as of right now, it ends on August 15th, which is in line with the governor's expiration, which is really um, June 15th is the end of the state of emergency. And then it's 60 days after that. So right now it's at August 15th. However, the mayor has um, submitted an order to city council to extend that to November 1st, I believe. Um, so as of as of now, it's August 15th. Um, so it could potentially become November 1st. And in that case, if it did, I would let everyone know um, of any extension. Okay. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Anybody here from the Majestic Saloon? Uh, yeah, this is Phil Peak here. I'm the owner of the Majestic Saloon. Okay, uh, you tell us a little bit about what you're after here. Yeah, so um, let me give you a little background. We're the the Majestic is emerging from 15 months of basically being shuttered. Um, we have a new uh, management uh, group coming in, uh, both in terms of the bar and the kitchen. We're kind of reorienting the, the whole theme of the, the restaurant to make it more food oriented. Um, and um, when we began to uh, uh, come back into operation, I talked to Amy Kaling about some of the possibilities for outside dining and she referred me at that time to Deb Flynn, who was organizing the, the uh, Summer on Strong um, uh, event. And uh, at the time, Deb pointed to two potential spaces that we might actually be able to occupy. Uh, one of those has since been uh, occupied by Progression because they were waiting to hear about whether the food order uh, was gonna be released. And, and that has now been approved and they've occupied that space. The second space was a space uh, right in front of the uh, Ink and Toner Solutions, uh, right near Elm Street. Um, and um, so we were interested in that space. As I understand, that space was originally um, set aside or intended for Moshi Moshi, uh, but uh, they did not uh, participate in the, in the uh, organization, I guess, of, of Summer on Strong. And uh, Deb said that that might be a potential uh, for our use. Uh, but when we re received a revised plan, it looked like that the, that the city in, it was gonna have a significant setback to allow for truck turnarounds from trucks that run into the bridge uh, on, on, Elms, or on Main Street. And so uh, we sort of pulled back from the uh, from the idea because it didn't look like the space was actually gonna be useful to us. 
but when the city actually came in and set up the facility, it turned out that there is a useful uh, and unoccupied space that's about 40 feet by 16, which we think uh, we could occupy if it's uh, acceptable uh, to um, uh, both to the commission and to the people, the other participants on in strong on summer on strong. And so what I'm doing is putting an application in with a, uh, a design that we, we put together uh, with the notion that we would be uh, uh, on site uh, serving food and beverages uh, in this uh, space to about six tables. Um, we would be delivering fruit food from the Majestic. Uh, so I, our, our intention right now would be to go down the alleyway and onto the, uh, onto the site of the Summer on Strong. It's about 40 feet from our kitchen to the street, and then about 80 more feet over to where are the entryway to, our, uh, uh, to this, this potential site would be. Um, and um, um, so what we're looking to do right now is to see if we can get guidance from the committee about issues that they see with this and maybe a tentative approval uh, uh, for us to begin to move forward. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I will say we had a conversation uh, this morning with Deb Flynn about this. She seemed to be fine uh, with the proposal. She, her concern was mainly that uh, our look and feel be consistent with the other restaurants uh, that are participating in the event. So she wanted umbrellas that, that were the same color uh, and would, would fit in. Um, um, so that's where, where we're at right now. We've made a, a um, over the last couple of days, we've made several attempts to contact uh, Moshi Moshi to see if they had any further plans for use of the space. Uh, we haven't been able to make contact with them uh, as of today at uh, 4 p.m., uh, but we will continue to try to do that. Um, so right now we're, we're putting this application in uh, to uh, request use of that space uh, if it seems feasible to the, to the Liquor Commission. Yeah, I, I have a question. I mean, you okay. mentioned a, a basically 120 feet to your your space, but 40 feet from your kitchen to the entire space of? That gets us, yeah, it's 40 feet basically from our kitchen to uh, the sidewalk area. To yeah. summer on so to it's where 40, other- uh, It's 40 uh, feet down, down the alleyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, and then you're in the area with all the other restaurants and then you just need to walk down to your space is what you're saying. Exactly, yeah. All right, so are there any other restaurants using the same um, egress as you will, as, you know, as far as? No. No. Because all, um, the, all the other restaurants are either directly in front of their venues uh, mm -hmm. or they're, they're doing, uh, uh, you know, takeout type. Right. Yeah. Okay. And Mushi Mushi is this was originally their space and they opted out? I think it was originally in the plan. It was designated. This is what Deb told me. So I, I, I can only give you what she told me that that, that was the original plan that would be available to them, but they didn't participate in the planning of this and, and indicated to her that they weren't going to be participating in it. I don't know what their current standing is, whether they want to use that space. Um, and, um, you know, our sort of position on this is that, you know, if it's, if it's available, we would like to, to use it. Uh, if, if Moshi Moshi is going to use it, we would certainly back off of this proposal. Uh, but we, we haven't been able to make that or figure that out yet. Well, I think as far as the city goes and, you know, for the success of the event, I mean, the last thing we want is an empty space, right? you know, so, I mean, clearly there's um, spaces that were set up there so that it could be a vibrant downtown, you know, addition. So, um, Helen, what are your thoughts? Um, uh, I'll be honest that I 
I guess I don't see it the same way. I mean, it, it's my understanding that there was a lot of planning that went into the Strong Avenue, the summer on Strong, and that it was um, everyone who was involved is on Strong Avenue and Progression has made the extra effort to actually park their beer serving truck there so that they're not distributing from a far distance. So um, I think the intent was not sort of, you know, to, to have other places jump in sort of last minute. And also I'm concerned with the long distance that it's sort of, it's not in keeping with what's going on on Strong Avenue. These people are, are either have made other accommodations so they don't have to walk up the street with it um, or they're serving right in front of their locale. And to me, it sort of brings up this, you know, does this mean that it's open to anyone along that street? You know, could some of the India Palace jump in and say they actually want a spot? You know, I, I think it just it doesn't, it's not in line with the intent and the long planning that went um, on at, um, for this whole summer and strong. I know a lot of effort went into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm just sort of concerned with sort of a last minute, there's a space I'd like to jump in and you're transporting from quite a distance away. That's- Well, the distance that, you know, the, the 120 feet is not, if it was 120 feet to the space, Helen, I mean, my thoughts, mm -hmm. that would be of concern, but 40 feet and then you're yeah. in the space, the, you know? But it is, Brian, because the only the only premises that would be licensed for majestic would be his space so technically is the 120 foot distance yeah that's quite it's quite a run you have, yeah. i think you have to consider that 80 feet because so how do the other area. how do the other venues deal with that i mean they cross the they're, sidewalk they're all on strong and they're all setting up in front of their establishment yeah. Right. But they're, so you're giving, we are granting them sidewalk as part of their licensed area. Yes, then? We've granted all of them transportation, uh, transportation of alcoholic beverages limited to the sidewalk. In order yeah. to get okay. So, so the only, the only issue is really is alcohol, correct? Is transport of alcohol. Um, can I read Natasha's thoughts for the record? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Summer on Strong event planning was in the works for a long while prior to the kickoff and not without a huge amount of effort, attention, and expense by the Strong Ave establishments who are participating. Given the depth of careful planning, I do not think it is an appropriate opportunity to ask to enter the event, nor do I think the small space identified by the Majestic directly in front of another restaurant is a reasonable distance to be transporting alcohol from the establishment to the requested space. For these reasons, I do not support granting the outdoor dining expansion. Great, thank you. So question, all we're really concerned with is transport of alcohol, correct? Because food wouldn't be a problem. I mean, you can get in a car and drive food 40 miles away and you're still fine, right? Um, so my question is, if Progression's allowed to have a beer truck, are you able to do something like that and get your alcohol closer to your event. If we were to say yes, my concern is you have an empty space. Yes, big expense, lots of planning. Now a huge empty space. I mean, to me, that's like going to a home show and you know, it's half empty down the aisles. You don't want that. You want people to enjoy and, and uh, really get a full experience in my opinion. So if we're just worried about so, alcohol transport i haven't had that question answered so is that our biggest concern what's the question transport of alcohol 40 feet to the distance or 120 to their space i mean historically speaking the commission's never done anything like that yeah that, that's a that's a distance yeah, I mean, we're to the other people are transporting 10 feet, you know, they're transporting right. Yeah, they're going across the sidewalk. sidewalk. No, I, yeah. I get it. They're going across the sidewalk. That's and the other places are part of the planning effort. You know, I agree what Natasha right, let's, was saying. Let's switch gear. Let's switch gears for a second. Um, big open area with no one there. What happens to that? Does that get absorbed by the other restaurants? You know, just so there's not some big, you know, six tables that are empty all the time. 
how, how big an area are we talking about? It sounds like yeah, I was just looking for the uh, um, forty by the it's forty by sixteen. Yeah. Um. So like a little shy of seven hundred square feet. Yeah. So can but, I? You know, yeah. Yeah. Add a couple things here. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm totally sympathetic to the planning that went in, that was been involved in this. Um, at the time that that planning began, uh, we really didn't even know if we were going to be in business. Uh, we were we were hanging by a thread trying to get through this pandemic, and uh, so uh, we didn't we we're not aware that the planning was going on. If we had been aware, we probably would have made a an attempt to participate in the planning at that time and, and been involved with this whole process. So I understand that and, and, and totally sympathetic to the amount of work that's gone into this. And that's why, you know, we approached uh, Deb at Amy's recommendation to see if this would even be plausible. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, you know, so that's, that's where that piece comes. The other, the other piece that I just want to add to this is that when I talked to Amy originally, uh, she suggested that we put an application in for um, um, space directly in front of the of the majestic uh, on the street directly in front of the majestic. And when I discussed that um, uh, with Annie, you know, the, the what I was told at that time, which was you know a couple months ago, that the preference would be uh, to uh, have us down on Strong because they didn't want to dedicate more spaces on the street uh, because it would be disruptive to parking. And so the notion, our, I mean, our belief at the time was that Strong would have been a more appropriate place uh, for the city's particular needs at that time because it wouldn't involve uh, disrupting any more parking on the streets. That was a conversation with Annie, you said, or an email? Yeah. That You know, is that why you're checking, Annie? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just wondering. Yeah, I'm just, I don't, I don't recall that conversation. But I'm so. Well, even just last week, we had that a very similar conversation, which led to that same, because of, that was the original. The, you know, that's why there was a Plan B, and we and and we came back to that same notion that the city didn't want to to put any. Uh, spaces in front of the in front of the the uh, the majestic is that piece accurate i mean i'm wondering is that still is that a possibility or not to do a space in front which would make no that's not it's not a possibility any longer in, in that area okay um and i i'm just the you're sort of talking about moshi moshi as though they may still participate um that sounds that sounds like there's some wavering going on there well i'm certainly i'm uncertain uh i don't know deb doesn't know uh there hasn't been an application i think uh on their part to to use the space mm -hmm. um, so i don't know what their intentions are but i as i said you know if if that were the case uh, we would you know, back out of the, this proposal and, you know, and if this was objectionable, uh, as you know, in my conversation with Annie, if, I, if this was objectionable to the other restaurants participating on in uh, Summer on Strong, uh, we would we would also, uh, you know, back out of the proposal. Right. So I just want to note to the commission that I did ask okay. Phil to get um, written support slash approval letters from all of the restaurants on, involved in the project, um, which is not out of the ordinary. We've had to ask other establishments up and down Main Street to just get their support of their neighbors and before we've taken over parking spaces for dining. Um, so I, I did request that, uh, just so you all know. Mm -hmm. and oh, you, re you requested for Majestic in front of his place? I, I, I requested that Majestic get support letters from all of the establishments involved in the Strong Ave project, expressing their support for him joining in. 
And I'd be happy to, and I'd be happy to do that. That request came to me last Friday at five o'clock, and I wasn't able to do that over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think I mean I am in agreement with that too, and I don't know how we go forward. I mean, I obviously, I mean, uh, it, um, and it sounds like Natasha's feeling the same way. I mean, I at this point, I'm not leaning towards approval for various reasons. Um, I would say if that could be, if I could see that everyone is on board with it, everyone who's there is on board with it. I, I can't imagine that that empty space is a concern to them, um, you know, from what I've seen, and I haven't been able to get down there yet, but from what I've seen, you know, everything looks fantastic and these people have done a lot of planning and um, I think it will benefit them hopefully greatly. But, um, and I, I doubt, although I haven't spoken to them that there's a concern about 700 square feet that is not occupied at this point. Um, but I, I get, if I knew that they were all, uh, you know, had firm support of you moving into that space, then that would certainly change my mind. But right now I am concerned sort of, you know, why Majestic and I understand and I sympathize and I'm sorry that the pandemic has nailed everyone, but it just seems that you know, taking an establishment further down the street that's not on Sterling Avenue and then, you know, zipping them into that location to me doesn't make sense because I think every other restaurant may say, and why isn't it me? You know, who's in that spot? Well, they already are. I mean, you know, JJ's Tavern has mentioned that. I, I believe I read that earlier there and he's not the only one. There's other ones that are being like, oh, this is great. You got a strong Avenue thing. Fantastic. Why can't we have something? So neither here nor there. Um, I think, you, you know, what has to govern it is not a feeling, it's gotta be the law. And um, yeah, pandemic's been really tough. The bottom line is if it was to approve and he had that much distance, it's his liquor license that's in jeopardy. He has to maintain everything by the law. I feel we're over governed as the state, um, as it is. I mean, especially me coming from Florida and seeing that we have to limit the amount of liquor licenses. It's my opinion that everybody should have a liquor license and go to town and then it's the best one. You, you got a great product, great food. You have a smile every time you service. Good for you, you win, you, you, you know, you're a great establishment. To me with this pandemic and owning a small business, absolutely, I would lean towards, you know what? Fill the space and I don't care who it is. I mean, it's great that it's you that's vibrant enough to be on here tonight that you wanna do it. So if you gotta walk 40 feet, good for you. Your people are willing to throw 120 feet. Those people are going to have 25,000 steps by the end of their shift. You know, <laughs> fantastic. Point being, make your business work. That's where I'm at. Thank so you. if the law um, supports you to be able to do it, who are we to stand in the way of somebody making a living? You know what I mean? So, you know, can whatever. I, can, and I would, can I just suggest that, I mean, one approach to this if, if you're concerned about the the other restaurants and their reactions to our you know occupying that space you know is it possible to approve this contingent upon their are are getting their support you know um i don't know whether it's a, uh, if it is or not but here's my my point so if this is all really based on how people feel, yes, they put in effort, they put in, maybe they put in money, I don't know um, exactly what's gone into the planning, but- There was lots of, lots of money and resources and time and effort. Perfect. And lots. Excellent. So why is Mushi Mushi backing out? Mushi Mushi isn't backing out. They were never really, there was, I think there was a talk in the beginning of them potentially moving out, but for the last few months, as, as far as I know, that they have not been wanting to be part of the plan. Yeah, I, I mean, their hours of operation, you know, from what I can tell, their hours of operation are not um, like the surrounding businesses either. Neither one, neither here nor there, it doesn't matter. Point is, is that was their space or still is their space if they choose to occupy it or they don't. But if they don't, and somebody else wants to make provisions. It's not their space. It's it's a pub. It's the public way. Okay. So they're not entitled to that area. Okay. So no one's got entitlement to it. 
but yet there's a 700 square foot space with six tables or so. But keep in mind that he would be setting up a restaurant in front of another restaurant. But what's yes, the other yes, restaurant? Yes, part of it is in front of Ink and Toner, but it, but I mean, it's it's in front of. I, you know, I, I just, just to be. What's, what's just, the other restaurant? Just to be clear. Just to be clear, that 40 feet, I measured it the other day, 35 feet of that 40 feet is in front of Ink and Toner. And there's a- So, I, I guess my point is, is does it really matter if it's in front of another restaurant that doesn't want to be involved? I mean, you know, if Moshi Moshi's there and they have outdoor we don't know anyway. if they don't want to be involved, though. There could be a various reasons. Maybe they don't have the capacity to stat. We don't know. I know. We don't. We don't know a lot of things. So I think we should further it and find that out. But I also feel like we should give a chance, as long as it's within the law and somebody wants to do it, they should be forwarded that chance to make provisions to make a living. So, and that's my wholehearted opinion. So... If there's any way or reason that we shouldn't uh, be able to do that. And my question earlier to you, uh, Phil, was, you know, if there can be a built uh, a beer truck or whatever brought down by uh, progression, uh, is there any way you could actually do drinks down in your space or something like that? I don't know. Like, you know, what outdoor weddings have, you know, little bars and, and so on and so forth. I'm just ad-libbing. I'm not sure. Like I said, we have to look into it. Uh, the You know, whatever the law and provisions are but well it i is, just don't i yeah, don't want to go to i don't want to go to a venue and there's six tables that are just it's an empty space you know to me it just it's i don't care what people think about who put in what that's not a good feeling for the people that are there You're like oh what's going on i already hear the rhetoric of oh my god all these restaurants are closed and northampton's on its way down and out and blah 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 you know what let's make it vibrant you know let's make it something special that people want to be here you know, I'm just, I'm so tired of no, no, no. In the state of Massachusetts, you can't do it. You know, it is, if the law uh, allows, I'm for it. End of story. So if you have to go and get a letter from each one, um, if that's where we're at as a collective, um, uh, as the license commission, and you need to get support for uh, all the other people that are involved and they wholeheartedly accept you, you know, then it's up to uh, further vote between um, the commissioners and I. I don't know. What say you, Helen? Um, I mean, yeah, well, you... I mean, that, I think that would be a starting point. I, at this point, I'm not uh, comfortable with doing a uh, approval contingent upon. I think um, yeah, we're... we can do that legwork and there's the possibility that we could have a special meeting. It sounds like we might be doing that for another issue. Um, but I think that would be a, a starting point. Okay, so we'll table it for now. Um, or I would disapprove, and then if, and then he would just submit another uh, application, or I could keep everything. I mean, I would disapprove it. Okay, are you? So what would you, what, so give me some guidance here. What would you like me to do? Um, I think uh, what we're talking about is getting those letters of approval from the neighbors and then resubmitting. And I know Brian is coming up with all sorts of plans for you to have something right on site there. I don't know if that's something that you want to investigate as well, if there is an, another um, plan for occupying that Go space, ahead. but it would start, I think, with the, uh, uh, with the letters of approval from the other from the other participating restaurant. Okay. Yeah, I see no reason if progression's all the way down at the end of the street and they're allowed to be involved. I don't understand why you wouldn't because, be able to if you could if yeah. you could do something similar. Right. I was gonna say Brian because yeah they're right on site. They've made the effort to be right on site. No so, no and I, I agree and, and anyone else should be given that same right. So yeah and and I'm uncomfortable with yeah transporting that distance through, through all again that. his his liquor license holds all the liability right. it's not it, it it's like it's like the state of mass taking out the little thing on the gas thing because they don't believe we can fill the, the gas in our car without blowing ourselves up i mean he holds the liability 
hundred percent. So you want to put your license in jeopardy, do something wrong in that 40 feet and we'll snag your license. Promise you that. Otherwise run your business the way that you legally have to run your business. And there shouldn't be an issue. You get what I'm saying? It's just logical to me. Maybe I'm way off base. I don't know, but uh, you know, you hold the liability in that license. Mm -hmm. We're the governing, you know, commission over that. So, you know, that's just the way I see it. So I prefer to table it because um, a no is a hard no right now. Um, but I mean, what's the sense of uh, a new application if all we're asking is for five or six, you know, restaurants to give approval? I I I followed that up. Like with, we need it. What? Like we need it. I mean, I, we don't I, even need their approval, but it's a nice I thing. I started to, to follow that up with, I would keep his application on file and he can submit all the rest of the paperwork and then I can place it back on the agenda. Perfect. Let's do that. All right. So technically, Annie, though, do we need to at this point, because it's come before us, do we need to disapprove it and then we can approve it later? My or? suggestion would be to disapprove it since it's on the agenda as a discussion and vote. Yeah. For approval. So disapprove um, until further discussion uh, with submission of a whole nother application. Is that what you would need? No, with supplemental documents, the ones that you're requesting. Okay, there you go. All right. Okay. Okay, so I'll make a motion to disapprove um, the the on-premises outdoor dining expansion application for public spaces by MP Majestic Enterprises, LLC, DBA, the Majestic Saloon at 24 Main Street um, regarding the summer on strong project at this time. I mean, I don't know that we need to detail what will happen next for approval, right, Annie? <laughs> I mean, right now we're disapproving it. Until... Yeah further I'm, approval and so on and well, so forth. Hold on, hold on, Brian. It, Helen, finish your motion. Brian, if you want to make an amendment, you can yeah. make a motion to do so. Right. Okay, so I guess I'm finished. So yes, regarding the Summer on Strong project. So the amendment would be upon approval of uh, restaurants involved to be seen again, you know, in front of this commission with the same application. Is that right, Annie? I, I didn't understand that. So in other words, basically, I, I guess- I mean, I know what you're asking for, but it, it just needs to be clear in the motion. For the right, motion. so the amendment to it is until he gets approval from all, how many restaurants are there that you need to seek approval for? Five. 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 So until you, you you get your approval from five and then you you uh, reconvene, you come back in and see us on the same application. Okay. okay. Helen, is, good? I mean, Helen, is are you okay with seconding that? I guess I'm a, I'm a little bit lost at this point. I mean, what we're saying is we're disapproving at this time and he has the, he's allowed to go seek approval from these other restaurants and come back and resubmit the same application, right? I mean, I guess I'm just wondering the need for the amendment. amendment. I mean, we've, we've conveyed that information. I guess I'm we're wondering- not, the we're, not, for we're not approving more. contingent on anything, is my point. We're not- No, it's not contingent. It's, no. We still need to have a discussion once he comes back. That's fine. So I'll second your motion, all in favor. So, no. So Helen, do you agree with the amendment? Um, I don't think so. I'm going to be honest. I'm confused by the amendment and what it's what it's actually. It's exactly what Annie said before is when you go and you get your approval, we'll see you again. On this and she's. Okay. Sorry. So Annie, can you read it back then? What is the amendment? So say? your motion was to disapprove the expansion. Uh, okay, so we got your motion and then it's going to go back on the agenda. Brian's was basically an amend amendment to your motion, basically saying that Majestic needs approval of the five restaurants on Strong Avenue in order to resubmit an application for approval. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Um, Brian. Yes. 
Thank you, Ellen. Yes. I just have, uh, now that that's done, I just have one question for Phil. Would you be walking alcohol through other restaurants areas? No. So how, so you come out the alley and then walk towards main and then like over and in. Right. There's a space there. Right. You, you mean yeah. like the general opening? No, out of the alley, you can walk directly into the center aisle of the space. And you're not, you wouldn't be walking through anybody else's premises. I don't believe so, but I'll, I can double check that, but I don't, I believe there's a space there. Okay. Yeah, it's like a it's like a main hallway, is it not? Yeah, I mean, I the, aisle, the central aisle way. Yeah, I understand Annie's question, and I, I'll double check that and 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 get back to you. But I believe there's a space there because I walk through it every day. Okay. And I would recommend maybe when you resubmit that you show us a map of that, just so we can all be on sure. that same visual and be on the same page. Sure. And I and I'll look at to see if there's a way that we can set it up so we don't have to transport the alcohol. And we can have it out there. Right. Perfect. And one one other thing. I know I said five restaurants, but it's actually six, including Moshi Moshi. Uh, Moshi Moshi. Yeah. Yeah. And if Moshi, if Moshi Moshi wants that that space, it's a moot point. I so. I just I'm suggesting that the commission require a. I mean, he's setting up a restaurant in front of another restaurant. So I, yeah, I, of course, I would suggest getting their approval as well, kind of like we've done with other establishments. Phil, I would actually start with them and ask yeah. them if they want the space, and then you don't have to go through the legwork if they want the space. You're yeah. all done. Well, we've been attempting that for the last couple okay. of days, so we will do. We'll follow up on that. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. You bet. Thank you. Um, number eight, discussion and possible vote to amend the entertainment license held by Blue Paws, Inc., DBA, JJ's Tavern. Uh, discussion of noise complaint from petitioners. John, are you uh, here? Yes, Brian, I'm here. Okay, can you just state your full name for the record, please? Jonathan Newman. Okay. So I, I suggest hearing from the petitioners first, since it was them that um, sparked this agenda item. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. So um, who's here to represent the petitioners? Is there one person to represent? There is several people. I originally sent the petition to the commission. So if you want me to start, I'll be happy to. Yeah, that would be great. Hello, my name is Fabio Dallorto, for the record. I live uh, nearby uh, JJ's. Uh, JJ started last year uh, to have uh, outdoor events uh, with a uh, temporary structure, they had a tent set up during uh, the pandemic. They had uh, multiple events. They were like very loud. Like I can hear uh, with the windows closed, I can recognize like which song is going on. With the windows open in my backyard, I'm effectively uh, a member of the audience. And uh, at first, uh, you know, I and other people in the neighborhood were like very unpleased by the situation. But we understood that during the pandemic, there is an emergency. Like it's uh, it's understandable. Uh, starting this season, it looks like JJ wants to make this a permanent feature of their business, uh, continuing to have. Uh, uh, these uh, regularly scheduled concerts uh, going on uh, on a permanent basis. And uh, we do not think which is appropriate. We do not think that the space of JJ's, the small parking lot in downtown Florence is uh, an appropriate space uh, for outdoor entertainment. We think that it's uh, an appropriate uh, place for dining. That is not a problem. Having people dining and uh, enjoying their time outside is fine. Having very loud concert on a regular basis, uh, the continuous, uh, they are just not uh, an appropriate location uh, in close proximity to so many different uh, uh, residential plots. I think there are like uh, other people around here that make a similar comment. Uh, I think that it's just uh, 
downtown Florence uh, is a weird mix of uh, residential and other businesses. And uh, you know, I moved here what, six years ago, uh, seeking a quiet alternative to downtown Northampton. I understand downtown Northampton is uh, the center of uh, the Movida. I was aware of uh, JJ's. I patronize JJ's. I think it's a fine establishment. They always had indoor concerts. I just don't think it's appropriate to have outdoor concerts. It's not uh, respectful uh, of the neighbors, like it infringes in our right to quiet enjoyment of our properties and residences. It's uh, against the Massachusetts general law. The entertainment license are specifically designed uh, to be uh, ensuring that there is no unreasonable raise in noise level for the area. And uh, there is like the majority of uh, neighbors around JJ's signed a petition requesting the commission to remove outdoor entertainment at JJ's, leave the uh, outdoor dining. Outdoor dining is uh, reasonable. It's the entertainment part and loud concerts and uh, the DJ set and uh, the late comedy. That is the problem. Yeah, an indoor concert, okay. Like they always, they add them, they have like a indoor concert area upstairs, they have space uh, uh, down in the area. Like it's not, it's not a problem, That's, that is reasonable. It's the outdoor entertainment, which is uh, not reasonable. And I think that it can pass, uh, I don't know, like uh, any or whatever, like inside, like if somebody else speaks. Yeah. Uh, my name is Shannon Daniels. Can you turn your um, turn your volume up, please? Okay, sorry. My name is Shannon Daniels. I live at twenty three North Maple Street. Um, I am directly um, behind JJ's um, parking lot, um, and I'm going to second everything my neighbor said. Um, I feel like that I am a participant in the cons outdoor concerts. Um, when my windows are closed, I can hear everything. Like he said, I can hear the song that's on. Um, I cannot hear my TV. I have to shut my windows, put a noise machine on and turn my volume up to past where it can go because I can't even hear the TV. Um, I can't have, uh, I can't sit outside and eat because all I can hear is the music and the and everything else. Um, as he said, I, I don't have a problem with the outdoor dining that, please keep that. I mean, that's a great thing, um, I, but I just really don't feel like the outdoor entertainment is necessary now that the pandemic is over and most of Massachusetts is vaccinated. So I can't, I don't see why the uh, music can't move inside like it has been previously. And as he said, um, it sounds like he wants it to be a permanent thing. And um, I, I really, I'm very against it because like, I feel like I can't have a summer, enjoy a summer because I have to worry about Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whenever, you know, whenever there's a concert, I, you know, I have to leave the house and go somewhere else so that I can enjoy, enjoy my evening. Um, but as I said, I second everything my neighbor said. Um, and I know that a lot of the other, other neighbors that couldn't be here today feel the same way. I'm Elisa Foreman. My husband, Ron Bush, and I live at 33 Kai Street. We're about a block, a block and a half behind JJ's. Um, so I say this with very mixed feelings because I very much want to support the downtown Florence businesses. I also come from a family of musicians. So I very much want to support live music. Um, but the volume has just been very excessive every time. Um, we can't sit out on the deck behind our house and have dinner without having to raise our voices to be heard over the music. And it's also quite audible even if we're in the house with our doors and windows shut. So again, we would really like to encourage JJ's to continue outdoor dining, but just the volume has been, um, it's made it impossible to enjoy being at home. Just to um, be at home indoors, yeah. you can't. You can't relax, um, like the other person was saying on Fridays and Saturdays. Now I plan to leave my home between 5 and 8 p.m. every weekend because I can't stand it. It's just too loud. You can't, you can't even think inside your own house. All you can do is hear the music. 
I also wanted to quickly mention that we have called JJ's and spoken with their staff both last summer and this summer, just requesting that they turn down the volume and they haven't been able to uh, honor that request. So I'll, I'll just second, third or fourth what my neighbors have said. My name is Nina Kleinberg. I live at 122 High Street, which means that I live right behind um, JJ's. And Friday and Saturday are my evenings for entertaining friends out on my deck. And that's going, that has been impossible. That has been impossible uh, because of the outdoor entertainment. I also understand, you know, that they needed the outdoor space during the pandemic, but they have a history of great concerts inside. I think their music should move inside. I support their outdoor dining, absolutely. But again, I'm one of the neighbors who finds that I can't enjoy my own place on two very important nights for having my friends over Friday and Saturday. Anybody else? Uh, just a quick question, Fabio, you started the um, petition. How many neighbors signed the petition? You're, you're muted. 15 neighbors signed the petition all around the all around like the area of the sound stage of uh, JJ's. I did not uh, move like even further away, like, but uh, it's like the majority of people to buy the area. Is there anybody else that would like to add? JJ or John, are you yeah. there? Yeah, can we hear uh, from you then please? Uh, yeah, like I said in a letter rebutting to you guys, I mean, we've, you know, it seems to me, uh, and I could be wrong, but it seems to me that everything, most of this has come from that one event that happened on that May 8th night, that Saturday night where yeah. for two, I, let me finish, the two, the two phone calls that we got that night um, were to turn that down, that, that particular guy down, this guy his guitar, and we did that. We tried our best. If you turned it up, and then we ended up unplugging them all together. So, you know, we got to stop this, right? So, so we unplugged it, we stopped the show, um, we revamped, we recouped. And then I got a call on Tuesday on my cell phone. Um, uh, and that's when I spoke um, to Fabio. And, you know, we talked about his concerns and I talked about like my intentions and trying to work it out. So, we since, you know, put a bunch of measures in place to try to, you know, control sound put our, um, you know, we got a sound decibel meter. We walked all the way around the neighborhood reading numbers and trying to figure out a number that we could physically see. So that would be, you know, acceptable because, you know, one person's opinion versus that person's versus mine versus whoever's completely, it's hard to say, right? It's just opinion at that point, really. So we're trying to generalize by getting a number that we can read and say, this is an acceptable number to have here where we know it's not going to travel this far. Um, so we've been doing that and we haven't had zero phone calls, um, since then and we had the six shows since then and nobody's called the restaurant and nobody's called my cell phone and both those numbers are very accessible and you know we're, we're, we're you know we're even implementing more things that we're trying to do sound control wise and um you know we're we're putting infrastructure in to try to make that happen i mean and you know to use the word concerts when it's a guy who's in his guitar is a little bit of a stretch i think in, in the sense that you know we think i mean i walked it out on on, uh, on friday on uh, saturday night and or friday night and I went all the way back up Key Street and you could hear, you know, based on, you know, audibly the way sound travels, no matter what it's, whether it's a Mack truck driving down the road or music playing or whatever, sound travels, you could hear it, but it was at such a level that I could talk on my cell phone and talk to the restaurant with very, very minimal dull um, talking. I didn't raise my voice at all. And we're trying to, you know, I want to work with everybody. I want everybody to walk it out with me or tell me, you know, this is too loud or this is a number that's acceptable or this isn't. And maybe I'm completely wrong, but I'm, we're trying to do so much to make this happen. And, you know, the outdoor dining is right now, it's 70% of our overall business. And of that, you know, Fridays and Saturdays is, is 85% of our whole outdoor dining business. So 
I lose that, they go downtown, they're going to go somewhere else and get that experience. I mean, it, it is, it is what it is. I mean, I'm out, it's out of my hands at this point. Uh, I'm not trying to, you know, to plead my case in the sense that, you know, it's not, you know, that, that dire, but it is, I mean, this is a major, you know, I'm not trying to do this to make a whole bunch of cash. I'm trying to do this to survive. And I think it's reasonable what we're doing. We're not having concerts. We're not having bands. We're not having DJs. We're not having any of that. At most, it's been two people, you know, and that's it. Otherwise, it's a guy at the guitar or it's two people. And that's the gist. That's the extent of what we're doing. And and I'm not, I, I, I'm compassionate to what you guys are saying. And, I'm, and I'll, and I'll, I want to work with you. I'm not, it's not my way or the highway. I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. But there's got to be some give and take on both ends, not just cut me off cold turkey because we're trying our best. We're making strides. We're making adjustments as we go. This is new to us as well. And, and you know, I want, I expect, you know, hope the same on the other side of this. So, you know, and that's all I can really say. One question. You say you're not having DJs. Who is DJ Groove? I don't know who DJ Groove is. I don't hire. I don't know. Uh, for your summer outdoor comedy on April 24, May 22nd, June 26th, July 24th, August 28th, September 25th, with Tim Lovett, Kim the Shields, Laura Current, and music by DJ Groove. This is a sign in front of your establishment on Main Street right now. DJ Groove must be, so he's with Tim Lovett, who's a, the comedy, he's the comedy, he, he books all the comedy stuff. I can easily cut out him, you know, in, in, in the comedy part of it, either way, the comedy part the of comedy it. Comedy is among the most aggressive we canceled the show on last for may because we're trying to make some adjustments there the comedy part of it we can move that inside that's once a month last saturday that's not a problem i can definitely make that adjustment um and if they want to go also elsewhere they're going to go elsewhere i don't have a problem with that but the acoustic music you know we feel it's it's the amplified music that you ever like on every friday and saturday it travels like it doesn't matter if it's like an opera singer or like a voice like if you crank the volume of an amplifier this amplified music it travels very much so i know that you have like uh, measures to uh, abate the level of sound in the neighborhood it's your indoor music venue that you always use that's not the problem dining is also not the problem if you like patrons behave it's great like they can enjoy the outdoor dining and it's awesome you increase like uh, the capability of your venue very much now you're open there are no limitation to have indoor concerts and i just think it's not appropriate and why people stop calling you is because 15 people made an official complaint to the license commission we are discussing it right now that's that's the reason <laughs> second of all i believe that you have been called like uh, by miss foreman last summer twice and you say that you never received any phone call. It wasn't you, it was like the front desk or whoever answered the phone in, uh, in the facility. The, the gist of the problem is that like you are trying to have an outdoor music venue in a parking lot that's not even 80 feet wide. Your stage is 30 feet from the border of your property, of the property that you rent. It's simply not a feasible one. It's not a feasible location. Last summer, people endured it specifically because we don't want to uh, affect uh, in an undue burden like uh, undue uh, burden to local business we live in downtown florence we want downtown florence uh, to be affected i live here for six years uh, i'm gonna have a child and i want to raise it in downtown florence it's a it's a good thing it's a good thing to have a business i patronize you like both uh, from like the bar side and i went to see concert upstairs that's fine. The problem is that the concert outdoors are not appropriate in this location. I don't think there is any other permanent music venue having amplified music constantly, regularly scheduled months in advance in all of Northampton. You did something extraordinary. You were in an extraordinary situation was the pandemic, having your uh, outdoor event. I'm not even sure if uh, I think this 2021 is the first year that you have an outdoor rider for your entertainment license. The moment that you request an entertainment license for permanently changing that, you start receiving like direct feedback from the neighbors and we present it to the commission for review. It's not up to me to decide, it's up to the commissioners, but I think that the situation is pretty clear. And it wasn't an issue on one date, it's an issue on every, every night. Every date that you have. 
Like, I don't want to spend the summer with my windows closed, like cooked inside and never going to my backyard. It's just like, it, the problem is just the location. The location is not appropriate. In another location, it might have been appropriate, but it's not. You have an amphitheater like blasting music directly towards a residential area. In a range of 500 yards, you have like literally hundreds of people living. There are like multiple family, three or four things. There is a service net uh, facility. I don't know how many people live there in the Alfred Al Al people. There is Northampton housing just on High Street here. There is single family, there is duplexes. There is like literally anyone that's there. Look, I can see your stage from my backyard. It's just, the, the problem is I'm not against the events in, per se, I'm against the location. It's not an appropriate place to have an outdoor music venue with amplified music. And can I, can I clarify, I have a point of clarification. It's my, I, I've lived here for 20 years and JJ's has had indoor musical events. It's never bothered me. Why can't they go back to having indoor musical events now that the pandemic is easing? Why not just go back to the way it was? Now you said that outdoor dining was important for you. None of us objects to the outdoor dining. Have outdoor dining, just mu move the music back inside where it was for years. Go back to the way things were before the pandemic. I think that's what we are all asking for. Just go back to the way it was. The pandemic's over. Is there anybody else? Yes, I would also like to say that um, it is not only one event. It has been every single event that you have had outside. I am a patron of JJ's. I don't want your business to go under. I like you, Jonathan, but it really is a burden on all of the neighbors for every Friday and every Saturday night to have this loud music. And I know you said you took a walk and you didn't hear anything, but I'm telling you, I am living this. These other people are living this. These are our homes. This is a neighborhood. It is not appropriate for you to have outdoor musical events. They're concerts, as far as I'm concerned. They're, it is not appropriate to have them outside with this many people living in this neighborhood. You had them, you were successful. You had them inside before. I don't understand why they're, you have to have them outside at this point now that the pandemic is over. Masking is done. People are vaccinated. Over 70% of Massachusetts is vaccinated. There is, there really is no reason to put a burden on all of the neighbors. This is not a personal attack. This is our lives. I don't want to have to leave my house every Friday and every Saturday night. It's not fair. I can't hear my TV. I can't sit out on my patio. I can't grill i can't have people over it it's it is a burden anybody else have anything to add ellen yeah i just, I just didn't know if jonathan wanted to say something at this time i guess you would say something if right you wanted to um Um, so as I understand it, to, yeah, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, no, it's a lot to take in. I get it. Um, so I just want to be clear that this, um, agenda item is it's, it does say possible vote, but I posted this okay. before I speak, spoke with the city solicitor. So this is a discussion item only hearing from both parties on whether or not you think that it should be held as a public hearing in order to amend the license. So we do have to advertise and notify the license holder of a public hearing if you decide to go that route. Um, with that being said, I'm happy to read Natasha's views on this to kickstart your discussion. Um, Brian, it's up to you. I have a, a point, point, of, point of 
uh, I have uh, information or whatever it's called, if there are multiple steps that need to be taken to amend this license, how many more of our weekends are going to be ruined before we go through all the process? If it's gonna take all summer to go to this commission and that commission, there's What's only one commission. So it would, if the commission today decides that they'd like to hold a public hearing by law, they have to schedule it at least 10 days out from when they notify the license holder. Um, so if the commission was willing, they could hold a special meeting sometime in the middle of June, or they could plan on scheduling the public hearing for their July meeting, which is Wednesday, July 7th at 4 p.m. So what you're saying is we can pretty much expect that the rest of June, our Fridays and Saturdays will not be amenable to having guests in our homes because of this music. Oh, is, I, I, that's what I'm All hearing. I'm saying is that by law, we cannot hold a hearing until it's advertised uh, at least 10 days in advance of the meeting. Then we would request that it be done in 10 days. That that you can absolutely request that it it is the commission's authority to decide. Thank you, Annie, for explaining it. Thank you very much. You're well, um, I mean, I have a couple of questions. Do you have anything, Helen? Do you uh, want to go ahead and start off? Go, go ahead. Um, Jonathan, where is your stage located? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm trying to get a sense. So you know, there's, can a, you, there's a um, point Annie, of order here. The chair Annie, is the floor. Please mute everybody and then they can yeah, raise their hands. Everyone, hand if you have if you'd like to speak, you, you have to be recognized by the chair. So Jonathan, if you could answer that for me. Uh the stage is right at the back of the building. You come out the back stairs like you're going towards the back parking lot. It's where that so, patio cooler used to be, right? And it's facing your uh, gazebo. It's facing it, yes. Yeah, so that means the music is traveling that way, right? Correct. Um, okay, so, all right. I just wanted to know location of that. Um, I personally, um, I know that this is gonna take time before we can actually even do a special meeting if we need to. So uh, when is your next scheduled event? Um, Friday. This Friday? Yeah. Okay, and then the one after? Friday, Saturday. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to attend one. I don't know which, but um, I want to come out and see what this is. Uh... I think you froze, Brian. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Helen, I don't know what you think. You can go on if you want to put that into record. I I think we missed that, Brian. You you froze again. Oh, uh, do you want to read go Natasha's? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna do that. But um, I wanted to go back to you reading Natasha's view to get it on the record. Yep. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, my position in supporting both the permanent pavilion and outdoor entertainment license for JJ's Tavern was very much based on the premise that the intention was to provide an ambient setting for diners rather than create an outdoor venue that also happens to have dining. When we approved this outdoor entertainment license, it was clear that the license was subject to being revisited and that the success of outdoor entertainment would be dependent on open communication and cooperation between the business and the surrounding neighbors, as well as the license commission. This discussion is part of that process. It seems clear that the residential neighbors were sympathetic to JJ's outdoor business during the height of pandemic related restrictions because the circumstances were ex extraordinary. Now that restrictions have been lifted, it is not unreasonable to discuss the impact of regularly scheduled and marketed live amplified outdoor music in a location that prior to COVID did not have a license to do so. I appreciate the, I appreciate the efforts JJ's the effort JJ's has made since May 11th to mitigate the impact of the amplified music slash comedy outdoors. But I will stre stress that there is an indoor entertainment license already in hand and the outdoor license was not granted in the spirit of creating an outdoor venue. 
I look forward to hearing how the petitioners have experienced the sound mitigation. Since a comparison has been made to downtown Northampton and the summer on strong event in particular, live outdoor music starts tonight and should have and should any of the residential abutters find the volume to be unreasonable, the license comp commission has an obligation to conduct this same level of scrutiny. In that light and because of the complaints, it is my position that the use of an outdoor entertainment license at JJ's Tavern should be formally reviewed. Thank you. Um, Natasha, what do you have? You mean Helen? Um, I'm sorry. Natasha, yeah, my that. bad. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I'm wondering, Jonathan, I know um, uh, clearly this is not just one person making a complaint for one night. I mean, we're hearing the same thing from all of the neighbors and it sounds like it's been ongoing. And I also, uh, like Natasha pointed out, appreciate your efforts to try and mitigate the sound. And I understand that you want to do everything you can to, you know, maintain a vibrant business. Um, I'm curious too, as I think the neighbors are, um, you know, when the mention of comedy shows came up, you were quick to say, well, we could move that inside. So I'm wondering in your view, what the difference is about moving comedy inside versus moving some of these musical acts inside? Well, the comedy shows are more so a almost a private event, a ticketed event, right? So it's put on by a third party. They sell tickets, they, you know, fill the space, they have the show where that could be, you know, construed as an event, right? So you know, we could put that inside and we booked all this, you know, this, you know, somebody mentioned the, the booking, you know, however many months out, that's just what the business, that's just how the business is, you know, entertainment, you can't, you know, find somebody to play Saturday, you know, this weekend, who's just available, like you have to book things out. So the, the, the comedy stuff all got booked with, with the understanding that the inside wouldn't be allowed this summer based on what we knew back in February. And that's how this all started. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, but the, the, you know, the, the acoustic music is more of a destination, you know, feel environment setup. It's more like, hey, let's go down there. There's music and let's have some food and some drinks and hang out, you know. So it's more of like the ambient, you know, feel that we're looking for, for for that particular Friday and Saturday nights. Like, you know, let's go there. Let's do that. Otherwise, like, you know, the comedy stuff, like I said, it's, you know, predetermined, pre-sold tickets. You know, that's like more of a, you know, people aren't, people can't show up and just sit down. And, and have dinner for the comedy show outside it's closed mm -hmm. it's you know what i mean it, it is what it is it's so that's that's why i said that yeah and was your indoor music events it sounds like they've been successful in the pre-pandemic have been successful to have been music and in, indoors is that right that, that i'm not sure i mean what they're so that upstairs we had a music venue that was also third party um uh, booking group that put on these shows at you know 10 o'clock at night to, to uh, two in the morning or whatever they've since folded so that's that's all gone that's not we actually took all the sound stuff down upstairs that's all now it's we're gonna try to turn into a banker room to be honest is what we're trying to do to fill that space to make that lost that fill that void but do you have the capacity to um you might want to keep your screen on i'm gonna ask you a few questions okay. it's up to you um uh do you have the capacity to move it inside right now? Inside, the acoustic stuff down, probably not really because the way that the seating is, it's really, you know, we had to make a bunch of adjustments during COVID to put mm -hmm. seating in in certain places where we couldn't even fit anybody. I mean, uh, I mean, maybe we could stuff a guy in the corner, but, you know, our capacity is probably going to be 40 people inside where it's, you know. 65 outside you know right. except that's changed now right now can't you no i'm talking physical bodies you can actually sit right I, but I'm, I'm saying like is that because you've changed the seating due to the pandemic but now you can rearrange this, yeah it's more booth seating permanent not not tables you can pick up and move mm -hmm. so you, tables you can pick up and move out of the way and create your own kind of space you know what well, you know if we if it comes to that we'll have to figure that out you know what i mean i mean that's we've been doing on the fly uh learning for two years you know a year and a half though so we, we'll you know we'll figure it out but um that's not something we really thought of it's not you know because it's you know it's a guy in a guitar it's just it just it just didn't seem like we we're overstepping right oh you know, the 
so it sounds to me like the problem is not necessarily the guy on the guitar, but the fact that it's amplified. And I'm also wondering um, with the size of that space and you're calling it acoustic, <laughs> but, but is there, I'm wondering on the size of that space, if acoustic unplugged um, is something that would work because it's not a very large space. I mean, we don't need the neighbors to walk away to hear it, obviously. I'm wondering even for the people who are eating there, if they're hearing it a block away, I would, and, and I guess Brian's gonna check this out. It seems like it might be a little overpowering to be sitting um, you know, right next to that if there's some kind of amplification going on and you're trying to have dinner and talk. So I, so I guess my question is, is this the kind of the music that would lend itself to being unplugged? It seems to me that that, that would, that level of sound would be able to fill that space because it isn't that large a space. Yeah, we'd have to try that. It's not that something we tried. It's something I can't, yeah. you know, I couldn't test that because I don't have the means to do so. Where I did with, you know, amplified music, I could put through a speaker system and blast it in there to see how loud it is. We can even talk inside there and then walk 300 yards back and see right. how much how how much decibel change happens at 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards. You know, I can read those physical numbers. Mm. and see and you know and hear it and feel it you know I, that we haven't tried but that's just because i don't have the means to i can't play guitar yeah. in a corner and then run yeah see how it sounds 100 yards on a lot well i think even without the technology i mean it's sort of logic you know i think that you know it's sort of clear that if it's going to unplug it's going to they're not going to hear it a block away to the extent that they will. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. But whether or not it gets to the back of the, our space is another question. That's, if it does, great. You know what I mean? But I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Right. Um, so I guess I would recommend, I mean, this is sort of nice that we're having this uh, chance to have this dialogue, if you want to call it, with the neighbors. Um, and, and, you know, I can sort of sense their frustration. And I don't think that a lot of people have gotten together to make up some stories about this. It sounds like this is a real issue and these people are living right there. Um, um, and I know, you know, we as a commission, when we said, go ahead and do outdoor entertainment, we had those discussions about decibel levels and things like this. And I think now the experiment has been conducted. And I know we're not making decisions <laughs> today about the license, but um, I, I will say that I'm, leaning you know towards having a hearing about it um i you know for the sake of your business and the neighbors and everyone and the timing on this it's of course much more preferable if it's something that's worked out and that you do come to some sort of reasonable comp compromise that will allow these neighbors to enjoy their summer and enjoy their homes that they've been in for a long time and also bring business to your location and i guess so i think for me just the first thing that comes to mind is if it really is a guy with a guitar who does not have any kind of amplification, perhaps that's a solution to the to the situation. I mean, I know it has to be tested, but um, you know, and I don't know what kind of music acts you have lined up. But the reality is, if it ends up continuing to be loud and it gets to the point where we have to amend that license, you're going to lose all the music versus you know testing out if this is music that could be unplugged. So anyway, that's my thoughts at this this time. Um, that's a great point. <clears throat> um, John, listen, being that I install outdoor audio systems, I know a little bit about, you know, music waves and things like that. Um, and we have a few weekends, it seems, before we could even legally have a hearing if we get that far. Um, hopefully, like Helen said, you guys work it out. But any reason why you can't put the um, solo act with the with his back and the speakers, you know, with face not facing no there but facing the building? Because I, I I think I saw you said you put up soundproofing on the back of the stage. Well, quite honestly, if the music's going down the parking lot, the stuff behind the people it doesn't really help as much. It needs those music, those waves, radio waves have to hit something to be diverted, bounce, so on and so forth. So even, um, you know, looking at your, I, I saw the pavilion, great job, by the way, looks great. Um, if you could run a cable, so to speak, across the top and then even some kind of, you know, like an outdoor tent would have those um, curtains. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like a soundproofing curtain and then have the person, um, yeah, exactly. That's the, the thing. But have the person, you know, um, playing music towards the building, 
you know, and granted, I know music will hit the building and then bounce, but I mean, it can go all different places. So that might have a huge effect on what all the neighbors are hearing, you know, yeah, and especially yeah. if you turn down, the, you know, the volume and your decibels aren't as bad. And quite honestly, if your music does hit the building, you probably don't have to have it as loud because now it'll go in and then resonate back. And then, you know, this might be a, a simple change that makes everyone happy. You know, yeah, so there's no difference geographically. I mean, the only reason that's up where it is is because there's power there, right? As as I, power, yeah, I, I did think of that. I figured so if we put it the other way, I mean, I could put a pop up tent there and face it in, it's not going to change anybody's, somebody's back still going to be, you know, because everything's facing, it doesn't, it won't change the direction of people's uh, peripheral, right? So, like, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side. So, that, yeah, I'm talking about. I'm talking about directional um, space of the speakers, the, where the, the radio waves leave the speaker and go out, you know, so yeah, instead of heading straight right. down through. Yeah, mirror it the other way. So put it, so the yeah. back would be to the back of the dumpsters facing toward the building. That's where they perform yeah. into it that way. That, I mean, we could try that. You know, I would also try the, the unplugged and see what, you know, when the guy comes and see what that's like. Or maybe tomorrow I can get a buddy of mine who plays guitar to sit, sit out there in the afternoon and see if he can just sit there and see how, with nothing just his guitar and see how loud that is i mean right it's something you know it's something it's something i mean i think it's worth the effort you know i'm just throwing it out there um you know and i mean they might not hear anything at all if you if you were to do some things like that which i know a couple of power cords will cost you and, and if you did a curtain or whatever uh or a pop-up tent that might cost you a little bit but um it, it would be more important i would think for you to keep your entertainment license as helen uh said so or kind of said so <laughs> anyway um i Sorry, i, I know just we... want to bring to your attention that fabio has his hand up whenever you're ready oh, okay i see it go ahead fabio i wanted to ask a further question about uh, the reorganization of the indoors do you just tell me that like over the past year you specifically redesign the indoor so that you cannot have concerts inside? We're talking about the upstairs. The upstairs and downstairs are two different spaces. Yeah, talking I'm talking about, about I know, like it's the 13th floor, I think it was called. Right, so that's the, the downstairs. It's like, where did you add concert before? Beside upstairs. the 13th floor. Upstairs. Okay, so I don't know, like, it sounds counter counterintuitive to me to have like, a whole system design was, you know, a music venue. I've, I've seen concerts there years ago, and and now creating, destroying that and creating an outdoor music venue to have concert. Now trying to go like through incredible lengths to try like to mitigate the somewhere like the solution is already there. Like that's the thing I don't get. You'd, I don't expect you to get it. You haven't been in the business for twenty years like I have. And the, 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 the reason that was, I don't need to explain to you why the reason that was up there was, that was our 10 o'clock to two o'clock in the morning business. We had no business downstairs after that. So we had that space to make that viable income for us. That's not a reasonable, you know, that's not gonna, it's not, our business isn't, doesn't flow like that. And I don't, sorry, you don't understand that. I'm not expecting you to, but it's, I can't just say, okay, let's take all the, all the music, put it inside. And it's all, it's going to be the same volume and same atmosphere as it is outside because it's not. Yeah. But you created outside recently. It's a new creation. Like I, I, I understand, like, I just, I don't want to fight you uh, over this. I'm just going to tell you that like, it is uh, incredibly invasive for all of us living next door. It Can is I add to that? pervasive. It is continuous. It happens every single weekend. You even mentioned to the license commission that you also are thinking about starting doing like Sunday brunch. Uh, no. so it's on the record. It's on the record, it's on the minute. So you're gonna have light jazz on Sunday brunches. No, I'm not open at brunch. So I don't know where you're getting that information. Uh, I think I just to clarify, think it, was it, was, it was in the minutes. I think you had said something how you were going to coordinate with uh, Miss Flo's about possibly doing Sunday brunch with light jazz. Right. That's that, how I remember that, it. That conversation came up because she was going to pull the entertainment license for that. And I was going to be serving because you guys were talking about mixed drink serving during both opening times of the same. The question came up about can a customer sit down and get uh, breakfast and get a drink from us? And then that, that, 
I said, during that time, if she does that, that would be the only time we would cross over. That's, that has nothing to do with me. I'm not getting jazz bands. I'm not doing anything like that. My license is five o'clock to nine o'clock, seven days a week. It has nothing to do with the breakfast or morning. So that wasn't anything to do with my license or me doing anything for jazz. Just saying like, literally like from us, the, the local residents, it's, uh, this is pretty bad. Like, and, and again, we're not against your outdoor dining. We're supporting that. It's entertainment, it's a problem. All right, um, Fabio, we appreciate your um, your addition again, but uh, I will add, I understand where John is coming from. Um, I frequent a lot of restaurants. I love outdoor dining and especially with uh, music or live music. So um, I'm a fan and I go to that wherever I can, when I can. Um, but I also understand what you guys uh, are dealing with and where you're coming from. So. Uh, I think that it's um, been uh, settled out that Jonathan is definitely going to uh, continue to do some things to try. And, um, you know, currently, you know, whether you've heard it or you haven't heard it, but this commission is pro-business and we want to do everything we can for the citizens of uh, Northampton, but we also want to, you know, do what's right for the businesses as well. So, um, you know, it's going to be if we decide to do a uh, um, special meeting or a public hearing for this, it's going to be uh, at least 10 days, if not longer, uh, due to the law that we have to put it in the paper, so on and so forth. So uh, there's going to be a couple of weekends in there for um, some more experimental uh, things as far as decibels and music and how to set up and so on and so forth. So. Like I said earlier, I hope that works out and I hope there's a common ground that can be found by everyone. And, um, you know, you guys become fans, hopefully, uh, we'll, but we'll see what happens. So, uh, Helen, I, I don't, um, I mean, barring me going out this weekend to, to get some things and then Annie, if you want to work on um, emails, just back and forth uh, to kind of see you know, what my findings are and what we want, or do we have to put it on the agenda? Um, you know, or do we want to hear, I guess we've already heard from Natasha, you know, in her opinion, so. Yeah, I guess, Helen, did you have anything to add? Yeah, well, so I'm wondering if at this point, I mean, I, I, I at this point, are we compelled to make a statement about whether there will be a public hearing? I will say I'm leaning towards saying that we will be scheduling a public hearing. Um, um, we will do it sort of at the easy, you know, the earliest convenience is something we'd have to figure out when the commissioners are available. At the same time, as Brian says, it still gives time in between. It could be that it's all resolved by then, and that's what we would discover at this hearing. But I do think that um, we need to have uh, an official review of what's going on. Um, but at the same time, I'm glad in a way, I know the neighbors are petrified about it, but I am glad that there might be um, an opportunity to see if there are adjustments that can be made that, that could allow the entertainment to continue. So we'll have that information also as well at the, at the public hearing. Um, so um, in terms- I think we need to converse with uh, Natasha and her schedule as well. I mean, I'm all for public hearing. If that's what you wanna do, let's do that. Um, we need to set that, but- you know, we got to talk about dates, obviously, when everybody. Yeah, so we can do that. I can do that administratively after the fact. Um, right now, I would just suggest a motion on, on proceeding. Okay, so it would be um, uh, I make a motion that the commission at it's at the earliest convenient time, but we're at the earliest time when we can all convene and allowing 10 days notice, um, have a public hearing to review the entertainment license held by Blue Paws Inc. DBA JJ's Tavern. Is that sufficient? Yeah, I'll uh, second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brian? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Okay. Um, and I know we've made the motion. I just, I guess, want to make another statement um, that that um, I think um, 
I guess what I'm hearing, Jonathan, and I hope you're hearing it too, is that I am hearing from the neighbors that although they are very irked right now about what's been going on, I think pretty much every single one of them has also voiced their support for your business, which is great to hear. I mean, it doesn't sound like this is a personal attack in any way. It's just something, you know, you're trying to continue and better your business and make it more vibrant. They're saying um, it has been at a severe detriment to them, but it sounds like they're all people who have supported your business in the past and I continue to support your business. So I'm really hoping this can be sort of resolved in an amicable way, you know? So I'm glad in a way, I know it's a difficult situation for everyone, but I'm glad that there is this opportunity to have this open discussion about it. So- I mean, if I can say too, I mean, with the art of compromise, I mean, would anybody be opposed to, so say, you know, I don't want to waste the commission's time, you know, every month this, this goes on if that's what happens, right? So, you know, what if we tried the unplugged route, right? And so instead of putting the guy on the stage, I bring him onto the pavilion and he plays by himself. Like I would want and need you neighbors who are upset to come out to the place, right? To, to say, okay, listen to this guy play for 10, 15 minutes, you know, at volume he's playing with no amplification and then go back to your houses, see what it sounds like there. And then come back and say, that's acceptable. We can hit, we can agree with that. Um, may, you know, see what that sounds like to you guys. And for us in the sense that, okay. And that's, we know that works for us in our space and we know that works for us in, in your space. And that's a compromise that we can come to. That might be a solution, but if, if you're, you can't just sit home with your arms crossed and say, we want not, all or nothing, that's not going to get anybody anywhere. And we're going to keep running in circles, right? Because I'm passionate about what I'm trying to do and you're passionate about what you're trying to do. And I'm still making strides to try to get to the middle ground. And maybe that would be a suggestion that to come out and spend 15 minutes just to see if it works. Maybe you say, you know what? still too loud, still can't handle it. And then, you know, we can at least cross that off the list of things that didn't work, but I would need your ears, not just my bias to to go along with that. I'm not gonna start as early as Friday. I wanna point out uh, two things. Us being home is the whole point. Like the problem is the noise at home, not the noise in your venue. That's, that's the whole point of the reasoning. On the other end, if you wanna start experimenting with uh, somebody unplugged, no amplification whatsoever, no microphone, no speaker, no amplifiers. That's the meaning of acoustic. Sure, go ahead. No matter what, I think that if that is, if that would become like the only acceptable way, that still should be part of the license. The license has to be specific. Right now, your license says you can have DJ set, rock and roll, reggae, anything going on there. And you have like a concert. If your license would just be like, a, a classical guitar with somebody with no mic, that would be a different thing, but that should also be written in the license. That's the whole point of the license. So I right. think that's that's something that could be rectified at the public hearing after um, uh, neighbors and John possibly work to mitigate any sound issues. I mean, and I think I did hear John say that he'd, he'd have you come out, listen, and then go home and see if you could hear it from there. I, I can always hear from home. Like that's, that's the point. I don't yeah. need to go there. I just sit in my backyard yeah. and listen yeah. to it. We're talking okay, so on I think, five. But, on but I agree with the experiment. I, I, I appreciate the fact that you're thinking about uh, like how can we minimize that. And you know, if you're so, a classical guitarist like <clears throat> with no microphone and no speakers, uh, it's gonna be obviously a different kind of impact. But it's not only right. for me, it's for everybody around here, like turning around the, the speakers so like, uh, or like pacing of the music is also gonna have other thing. Like, you know, you are over there, you're over 17 meters from the wall. Like that is about the reverberation distance from sound. Like, so it's gonna obviously have some effects. Anyway, so you're not willing to go and do that. You, um, no, no. no, 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 you just wanna I, I, have I, I, people listen. You I'm willing to, to listen. Okay, let me finish, please. You want to just be able to listen from your house. I, I get that because whether it's loud, not loud under the pavilion, right. So mm -hmm. I guess my point is someone like myself, you know, um, non-biased, I, uh, you know, I need to be there in front of your house or, you know, your backyard and listen with you 
and see if I can hear it or somebody yeah. does. You know? can, you be, can you be impartial? That's my question. Why wouldn't I be? I mean, that's, I'm not going to well, lie if I can't hear question. it. If I can hear it, I'm going to say I can hear it. If I'm right, <laughs> if I can't hear it, I'm going to say I can't hear it. And you know, I'm um, all for I am all for him point. experimenting, but but my well, here's point another, is, listen, I am here's not, another I'm, point. I'm going to get right to it. Here's another point. Okay, and you, go ahead. Please understand. Um, you live in a downtown area. Okay. I live in so, downtown Florida. Wait a minute. I don't Shannon, care. The you, chair has the floor, please. Mute, please mute her. All right. Um, you live in a downtown area, like Jonathan had mentioned before. And if he didn't mention it, I would have. You have truck noise, um, traffic, I mean, all kinds of different city noises. So the fact that you may be able to hear it, even if it's acoustic, but it's livable, it's not driving you crazy. And you, um, Nina, can still entertain with your friends and Maybe you hear it once in a while. I mean, something has to be acceptable. There has to be an accept acceptable. Him going indoors with his music. Well, I, I just told you why that doesn't work. He's missing a venue of, and I don't mean venue is in, gotta have a banging head concert. What I mean is people enjoy outdoor dining with live acoustic, acoustic music. So we're gonna try the unplugged. He's gonna try and move his, his uh, speaker direction and we'll see how it works. And then we're still, we've already put into play that we're going to have uh, a public hearing. And um, we don't know what the outcome of that's going to be. But first, we're going to work together and we're going to see if we can make everything amenable for everyone. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm for everybody here as a, a citizen in Northampton and Florence area, also uh, pro business. So, we're going to do what's right for everyone. All right. Um, I think we could pretty much put this to bed. We've already made a motion, correct? I mean, there's no sense yeah, in- Yeah, I mean, it's the discussion's over. I just suggest doing right. everything we can to figure it out until the public hearing and, or, and, and everybody bring any experiences or evidence or whatever they've gathered since now until then, and then it can be discussed officially. Right. All right. Hey, just to thank everybody everybody, the commission, the other residents, John, for your time. I know that this is intense and it went longer and I appreciate that you're here trying to solve the problem. Thank you. Well, thanks for your efforts as well. Um, so we're gonna move on to the next item. Uh, number nine, um, approval of minutes. We you guys can't approve because Brian, you weren't here and Natasha's gone, so we don't have a quorum. Right, so any new business? I have none. Okay, I have, I have none. Helen, none. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.